I honestly want to be considered one of the hardest men to walk the planet Earth in the history of the world. And what I mean by hard, I'm not talking about the guy who does the most pull-ups, most sit-ups, runs the most. Just a person who's able to overcome any adversity in front of them. To figure out a way. Hardness isn't about all this physical, man. Yeah, it helped me get to where I'm at. But all I was doing in the whole process, the process wouldn't it be ripped. It wouldn't walk around with my shirt off. That, that wasn't it. I knew through the physical challenges, through the physical suffering, my mind was getting stronger. I was literally doing that for a reason. I had a weak mind. All the rest just happened to come with it. I was trying to strengthen the mind to handle all the, the all the judgment that's passed on me, perceived and, and not. Sometimes you make it up in your own head. You know, I, I, I just want to be able to handle all of that, everything, physical, mental. I want to be perceived as that, like an old school barbarian, an old school guy that's like, God, dog, man, nothing can hurt the guy, which is why the book is titled, Can't Hurt Me. I want people to have that mantra in their life. Take that with you. Take it everywhere you go in life. And if you believe that and you work towards that, callous in your mind, strengthen yourself, can't hurt me is strong. In any situation, like when I was in Buzz, they beat the shit out of you. I'd be the first one to get up and say, can't hurt me, mother. And they were beating the hell out of me. But you say that enough to you. False motivation becomes real motivation after a while. They can't see themselves doing it. They can't see themselves doing it. It's one big reason. The other reason is a lot of it is jealousy. When you set these humongous goals and they see that you're getting at it, and every morning I'm getting up training for a 200 mile run. And you see me get up at four o'clock in the morning and all you fuckers are sleeping. And by the time I get done running my 30, you come, I come home just getting up. How are you gonna feel about yourself? A lot of times when you're overachiever, a lot of our family members, a lot of our friends, they're mediocre. There's always those couple of guys who are uncommon, who wanna be better. But you make that mediocre mother feel like shit. Whether it's your mom, your dad, whoever. You make them feel horrible. I've been there. I'm speaking from experience. You get somebody around you, man, who's trying to be better and you don't have the drive that they have. It's a constant reminder of how f***ed up you are. You have to know that that's what it is. Anybody in your court is not saying, man, get after it, brother. I'm so proud of you. They have a problem with themselves because all you're trying to do is achieve more. If that's a problem for somebody, you have to look at them and say, man, you really have a problem with yourself huh it's much deeper than what you think it lies deep in your soul how i was able to fix myself was i saw how ugly i was towards other people who were great i was able to look back and say man you don't hate that much for any reason because he's great and you're lazy you're lazy he makes you feel like shit every single day that's where it comes from you gotta know you have to know where shit comes from to be able to solve it if you look in the mirror and see a fat person, don't tell yourself that you need to lose a couple of pounds. Tell the truth. You're fat. It's okay. Just say you're fat. If you're fat, the dirty mirror that you see every day is going to tell you the truth every time. So why are you still lying to yourself? So you can feel better for a few minutes and stay the same. If you're fat, you need to change the fact that you're fat because it's very unhealthy. I know because I've been there. If you have worked for 30 years doing the same stupid job you've hated day in and day out because you were afraid to quit and take a risk, you've been living like a coward, period, point blank. Tell yourself the truth, that you've wasted enough time and that you have other dreams that will take courage to realize so you don't die a coward. Call yourself out. Nobody likes to hear the hard truth. Individually and as a culture, we avoid what we need to hear most. This world is messed up. There are major problems in our society. We are still dividing ourselves up along racial and cultural lines, and people don't have the stomach to hear it. The truth is racism and bigotry still exist, and some people are so thin, skin they refuse to admit that. But if you are the only and you aren't stuck in some real world genocidal twilight zone, you better get real too. 
Your life is not messed up because of overt racists or hidden systemic racism. You aren't missing out on opportunities, making no money and getting evicted because of America or Donald Trump or because your ancestors were slaves or because some people hate immigrants or Jews or harass women or believe gay people are going to hell. If any of that stuff is stopping you from excelling in life, I've got some news. You are stopping you. You are giving up instead of getting hard. Tell the truth about the real reasons for your limitations and you will turn that negativity, which is real, into jet fuel. Those odds stacked against you will become a runway. There is no more time to waste. Hours and days evaporate like creeks in the desert. That's why it's okay to be cruel to yourself as long as you realize you're doing it to become better. We all need thicker skin to improve in life. Being soft when you look in the mirror isn't going to inspire the wholesale changes. We need to shift our present and open up our future. I'm not teaching good side of life. So I had to figure out a way when I came on in 2016 of teaching you what life really is for the majority of us is hell. And so while people love to show you the cars and the house and the vacations and all that's good, all that's happy. I'm going to show you the side that I know most of you are going through. And people hide very well. I don't want to hide anymore. I hid for 24 years. So that's why now when I told you, we can talk about whatever you want. Because as human beings, the one we, the, the, the first thing we have to learn, I also stuttered real bad growing up. So if you hear me stutter every now and then, it's because that was part of my life also. So it's funny, human beings want to show you the best side and they want to hide the worst side. For me, I'm going to teach you how to be vulnerable because that's the only way you fix yourself. You don't fix yourself by coming out here and me selling you some books. That's why I don't have them. I forgot them. I'm glad people got something from the book. I want you to learn that the only way you grow is how to look at yourself and say, okay, like I did. Table longer than this. What the f I have to do to get some? There was nothing good on there. Nothing. Yeah, I love playing basketball. I left that out. That's something I love to do. I don't care about that. That, that didn't make the list. Because the list that I had to live by was, it, was the very list that was to get me at this table with you. To talk to you, to the normal human beings which I once was, about how you can get somewhere and how it looks. It looks very ugly. There's no passion. There's no motivation. There's no, oh my God, man, I fuck. This is, no. It's every day of your life just doing. No passion, no discipline, no motivation. All these words, I hate people. I hate that so many people fucking use these words now because it's, it's watered. It's someone sitting in a room by themselves and they figure themselves out and say, God, this is going to fucking suck. Where's passion when you're 300 pounds? Where's the motivation when you can't read and write? Where is it? So how did this happen? I just f***ing did. I just did. I said, maybe at the end of this journey, there'll be something there for me. If not, I can read. If not, I'm 180 fucking pounds. There was, no, there, was, there, was, there, was, there was no magic potion. There's no, oh, let me wake up and look at some. No, all those words are overused. They're bullshit. It's all bullshit. Just do. You're living. How do you want to live? How do you want to die? How do you want to be remembered? That's, that's it. That's it. Period. Some criticize my level of passion, but I'm not down with the prevailing mentalities that tend to dominate American society these days. The ones that tell us to go with the flow or invite us to learn how to get more with less effort. F that shortcut bullshit. The reason I embrace my own obsessions and demand and desire more of myself is because I've learned that it's only when I push beyond pain and suffering, past my perceived limitations, that I'm capable of accomplishing more physically and mentally in endurance races, but also in life as a whole. 
And I believe the same is true for you. The human body is like a stock car. We may look different on the outside, but under the hood, we all have huge reservoirs of potential and a governor impeding us from reaching our maximum velocity. In a car, the governor limits the flow of fuel and air so it doesn't burn too hot, which places a ceiling on performance. It's a hardware issue. The governor can easily be removed. And if you disable yours, watch your car rocket beyond 130 miles per hour. It's a subtle process in the human animal. Our governor is buried deep in our minds, intertwined with our very identity. It knows what and who we love and hate. It's read our whole life story and forms the way we see ourselves and how we'd like to be seen. It's the software that delivers personalized feedback in the form of pain and exhaustion, but also fear and insecurity. And it uses all of that to encourage us to stop before we risk it all. But here's the thing. It doesn't have absolute control. Unlike the governor in an engine, ours can't stop us unless we buy into its bull and agree to quit. Sadly, most of us give up when we've only given around 40% of our maximum effort. Even when we feel like we've reached our absolute limit, we still have 60% more to give. That's the governor in action. Once you know that to be true, it's simply a matter of stretching your pain tolerance, letting go of your identity and all your self-limiting stories. So you can get to 60%, then 80% and beyond without giving up. I call this the 40 rule. And the reason it's so powerful is that if you follow it, you will unlock your mind to new levels of performance and excellence in sports and in life. And your rewards will run far deeper than mere material success. The 40 rule can be applied to everything we do.